Chris, Houston, good morning. Time to wake up and do the right stuff today with that docking module. We'll have you back at uh, 1409 on the ZOE. Houston, thank you very much for that inspirational music. We're ready to answer the call. And uh, you timed it perfectly. We were just coming into a beautiful sunrise.
Okay, Houston, we have OSBS data and we're about to start the McLean maneuver. Copy, Lance. Atlantis, no attitude maintenance is required. We concur. We're in process of pressing off today. Great. That's verified.
the story, uh, just uh, looking uh, where we are following uh, the DM installation, it says from OSBS checkout step four, record raw one and send for five minutes. Uh, that's all complete. Uh, and then it says to power off uh, OSBS. There's uh, actually a, uh, a call out later on in the flight plan. Uh, so I wanted to just to make sure that uh, they in fact want it powered off now and not wait till later. Yes, we have, and we'd like to get the switch box prior to the cabin repress. Okay, we will hold on the repress and uh, start working on the uh, switch box. Do you want to wait till we're uh, AOS so you guys can see that? And before we lose you, we are also ready for RMS ungrapple. Okay, and do we have a go on all those activities during the LOS, or do you want to wait on the other side? You can press on. Okay. Doke. Houston, Atlanta, the story. Do I understand we're go to ungrapple uh, before we get the, uh, the switch box? Switch box first and then ungrapple. Okay, thank you. And land is for the AMP station. Go ahead. Panel A7L, heaters slash DCU power three to on, please. Uh, your goal for cabin repress. We copy story, and of course the uh, grapple is complete. Uh, do we have a go to uh, proceed to poise for docking? Yes, sir. Atlantis for a minute to a Tetris LOS. We'll get you 22 hours and 17 minutes. Low video, Rigor.
Atlantis, if you're not using camera Delta, we're approaching a thermal limit. We'd like to power it down. You got it. And, uh, okay, he's headed back. He'll turn it on. And, Jim, we thought we'd um, give you uh, an AP story that I'm reading right here that uh, federal employees are reporting to work today as usual. And what we expect that as much as 40% of the federal workforce will be sent home sometime later in the day um, due to our budget situation. Okay, appreciate that. And uh, I assume you give us an LOS call before you go home, huh? An extended LOS call, we'll go. Docking module camera on downlink. You could take it whenever you want to. Hello, Chris. We have a good image up in the docking module. Looks like a fun place to uh, enjoy yourself in zero gravity. Yeah, I don't think it'll be empty for long, Dave, but it's a nice bit of space right now. Your lighting looks good and your focus looks good. Atlantis astronauts have finished the first step in a major goal of the space program, assembling a space station in orbit. The crew is joining us live. Uh, we thought they'd be on the shuttle flight deck, but in fact they are doing live television from a place that's never been done before, the Russian-built docking tunnel as Atlantis speeds over the Mediterranean Sea, trailing the Mir by about 900 miles and closing at a rate of 119 miles each orbit. Commander Ken Cameron. Does it worry you that the U.S. government is prepared to shut down in an hour or two and NASA will probably have only a bare-boned staff in a few hours to support your mission? No, we're not worried. We know that we have a very dedicated team at NASA supporting this mission, both within the government and also with the many contractors that support the space shuttle. We realize that there's a lot going on in the financial world and in the upper echelons of government, but the NASA family will look out after each other, and we know that Mission Control and the many folks at NASA are taking care of us. For pilot Jim Halso, what's been the, the biggest surprise of this flight for you so far? Well, uh, compared to my first flight, we're flying at a slightly higher altitude. I can see a lot more of the Earth every time I look out the window. And the uh, sun angles just happen to be lower, so we get a lot of perspective, a lot of shadows that bring out a lot of relief of the Earth. So flying over the Andes or over the Himalayas or over the Alps, is, it's just a spectacular experience, and it's something I'll, I'll not soon forget. Yeah, Chris Hatfield is a Canadian member of the crew. Chris, how did the docking uh, this morning go from your perspective as you put the tunnel where you're standing or floating right now onto the shuttle's airlock? And when you're done, please pass the microphone over to Commander Cameron for the same question for him as far as how the connection of these two pieces went. Well, John, it went perfectly. Uh, I had the chance to use the Canada arm, the robot arm that built by Canada that's put on the shuttle today, and it worked exactly like it had in the best of our training simulators in Houston. Um, I picked it up out of the back of the bay and brought it forward and then positioned it uh, exactly where I wanted it to be using the onboard systems and the space vision system and the digitals that come out of the arm. And, uh, and then when we assembled it, the mechanism, which was built in Russia, just worked exactly like everybody said. So it was letter perfect. Yeah, Commander, um, from your perspective, you had to sort of drive the shuttle into this docking tunnel, didn't you? 
Yes, that was what we used to make the actual uh, energy of contact was the thruster firing from the orbiter. And this was something that we had uh, given considerable thought to about what would be the required amount of energy, how would the mechanism work, how, uh, what kind of tolerances had to be present within the uh, contact surfaces. And it had been worked out very thoroughly both uh, in Houston and in Moscow since this is the first time that we'd ever joined uh, Russian and American hardware in quite this way. Yeah, Bob, another question for you, Commander. Do you have any concerns as you uh, get ready to take a six-hour nap, I won't call it a full night's sleep, and then get ready for tomorrow's uh, docking with the Mir itself? Everything working pretty well? Well, we've had a series of busy days. Uh, if we can finish up all of our objectives today, we'll probably try and wind down a little early, and then uh, everyone will be looking for a good night's sleep because, as you said, we have a very busy day tomorrow. One more question for, um, for Chris Hadfield, if I can, Chris. You got to experience a shuttle launch for the first time two days ago. Describe it to us. It is spectacular. From about five minutes in, when we knew for sure that we were going to have the weather to go, the smile on my face just got bigger and bigger, and I was just beaming through the whole launch. I mean, it is just an amazing ride. I've, I've had a chance to fly a lot of diff different airplanes, but there's nothing like the shuttle ride. Right, and if we've got time, one uh, last quick question for Jim Hulsell. Is what you're doing really worth it? Does the world really need a second space station in orbit right now? Uh, you better believe it, John. What we're doing is setting the, uh, the groundwork for a series of, of experimental uh, laboratories that are just going to mean a lot for mankind. The, uh, the science that we're going to be able to bring home when we're able to do continuous scientific research on orbit, it's, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to bring back a lot of payback to the people on Earth. And that's what we're, all, that's what we're trying to achieve, is uh, improve the lives of the people on Earth. All right, Commander Cameron and uh, members of the Atlantis crew, thanks for allowing us to visit your flight deck today. Good luck with the docking. We'll talk again later when you weigh something after you land next week. Gentlemen, thanks very much. Bill, Andrea, interesting. Thank you very much. Okay, Jim, uh, first of all, you can do antenna cable repositioning beginning in the ZOE, which is in about 12 minutes. Uh, It'll be, uh, you'll have an extended period to do the cable repositioning till 3 plus 35. That's about 20 minutes past AOS on the west. Uh, we'll get back to the cryo config, however you want to do it. Uh, do the error log resets to, GN, to SM and GNC after you do your CRT power down, please. We talked about the drivers there in config and a heads up on the left ohm's helium press, A closed, if you haven't gotten it yet. And the PMC will be on the other side of the uh, ZOE here coming up per the timeline. But we're going to have bad calm like yesterday for about 10 or 15 minutes, so we'll have to do it uh, as we lock up cleanly. We'll coordinate. Okay, if you want to do the cloud config now, I'm ready. Okay, Jim, first, please, on panel A-15. I'm there. Okay, on A-15, cryo O-2, H-2, tank 5, heaters A and B, four switches, auto, please. Okay, we're taking all the tank 5s to auto. Affirmative. And then next on R-1. On R1, cryo O2 and H2, tank 1, heaters A and B, all four switches off, please.
we sure appreciate uh, all the support during today. It's been a very exciting day, and I think we've uh, really made some big strides towards the ultimate goal. We're real happy. We're a little bit tired right now, and so we really appreciate the chance to uh, settle back, and we'll probably uh, try and turn in a little early tonight. Very good. And we'll give you a little word on the flight plan. By the way, uh, we did get a notice here, and let's just say that there are a lot of good parking spots available. necessary to safely conduct your mission is here and con conducting the rest of our missions and hopefully this will be short-lived.